Irish Media Network. We entertain. Hi, this is Patrice Bono, and you're watching About Last Night. So guys, it's Kelly and Brennan here with About Last Night. We, the Dublin team, are at the Button Factory for our Dublin Gig of the Week. We're here chatting to Patrice Baumel. Chat in a bit. <laughs> Kelly and Brennan here with the About Last Night Dublin team. I'm at the Button Factory chatting to this guy, Patrice Baumel. How are you doing? Are you excited to be here? Yes, always excited. I love Ireland, so uh, it's... It feels like coming home every time. The last time you played here was last year, Paddy's Weekend. The, I don't think I don't think the Irish crowd was like mentally prepared for your set. It blew the roof off oh, the place. Wow. To be on like an offer, it's like they weren't ready for it. Can we expect something similar tonight, or have you got something a little bit different for uh, us? Um, well, no, I'm blowing the roof off is what I do. <laughs> it's what I do professionally. <laughs> yeah, it's how yeah, I roll. Yeah, yeah. Just it's bringing it in. Possible. This is my job, so I'm getting paid for it. So, and I hope I can deliver. Yeah, I don't want to disappoint you. You do, you do every time. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, I have to say though, I do love the way you bring your dad into all. Like when you're chatting about music, you always implement your dad into it. And I really like that. So obviously, he's a music journalist, yeah. inspired, yeah. influenced by him. Was there any advice your dad gave you that you kind of stuck with you that you can share with like with our with our DJ viewers? No, not not really. What my dad, he just exposed me to the music. He never really pushed me into any corner. He just. Uh, said here's my record collection do whatever you want uh, and he let me do my thing and whenever I f showed any interest he would support it by simply buying me an album here and there so he just kind of he, he stayed in the background really gently and just nurtured uh, my musical love that's really nice that you had that but it's nice that it's in the family and that you're able to share because I know obviously music is definitely a passion of yours but definitely in the genes then as well at the same time yeah yeah, yeah in a way yes <laughs> in a way it's kind of there it's yeah, kind of generated yeah. from that now with every DJ obviously you put your heart and your soul into every track that you make everything is different it's unique have you got one track that it's like oh that's my baby that's the one I worked on I love playing this to a crowd um it changes. Uh, right now, at the moment, this uh, is a track called Grace, which is not released yet. It's going to come out and on Compact uh, next spring. I'll play that in every set. So I'm in love with that one right now. Okay, so we can yeah. expect that one. Yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. I love that. That's really exciting. Yeah. Last year, I feel, was definitely a year that it kicked off for you. 2017 was your, your year, like lit up. And especially, I think it was when you when you dropped Glutes. That was when I heard that song the first time, right? I was like, this is going to be a hit. Yeah. I predicted the future. It was voted like one of the number one songs of that year. Brilliant song. You're sitting there, you're producing some new music. Have you got anything? Have you got an EP planned? Have you got anything else happening at the moment for you? Yeah, I have a quite a few things happening. A couple of remixes. Um, I'm remixing... Um, um, an old border community classic, Gazebo by Fairmont. Um, I'm uh, working on a, a global underground compilation, a new one, uh, the Berlin edition, which is going to come out somewhere in spring next year. New compact EP, um, Clapton remix, Emmanuel Top remix. So quite a few things like going quite on. Quite a lot. Like, have, yeah. have you got a moment to breathe yet? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's quite busy and, uh, and with all the traveling in between, I need to really um, pace myself, So, which yeah. means I can't party as much as I would love to. Uh, uh, and also during the week, I need to be a little bit disciplined. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I love doing it. So it's, it's, it's not a burden. It doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, it's what I'm here for, you know? Yeah. Well, I hope that at least, even when you're in Dublin, just for the little bit that you're here for, that you can do a little bit of sightseeing, try Guinness, try some Tato, do something exciting while you're here. I've heard rumours of a little after party being planned, uh, so uh, that's probably going to be the sightseeing we're going to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the inside of a party rave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks so much for taking the time yeah. out, Shadows. We are so excited to see your set tonight. We really are. It's, awesome. I'm, I'm buzzing for it. Thanks again so much for chatting to us. What's the crack, guys? It's Dara, back for another episode of About Last Night. Down here at the Palm House for a Blaze Block event featuring none other than Ski Mask. Absolutely buzzing for this one, so stick around. What's happening, guys? It's Dara down here at Breeze Block for Ski Mask. I'm here with Matt Burns, the founder and owner of Breeze Block. How are you doing tonight, Matt? Uh, yeah, I'm cold, like. 
<laughs> it's pretty freezing out here. That's pretty cold. So you were recently, you were previously part of Twitch, and then yeah. you moved across and created your own brand, Breeze Block, and you've spent the past couple of months uh, inviting uh, f uh, DJs that haven't played here as frequently. Yeah. So what's your, your kind of plans for Breeze Block and who you plan to invite in the future, that kind of thing? Well, I mean, I don't really know. That, that's a good thing though, yeah. I mean, well, keep it fresh. Like, even, even for next year, I'm not even sure what I'm going to do yet. I, I kind of feel like I wanted to be a bit more spontaneous, like, um, and just do things that are kind of interesting now. And um, as you go along, you kind of yeah, work that out. See what that's, and see how that develops. I don't know. I mean, I think that you know you can do things that, and book things like for you know a year in advance with the kind of big staple names, but everyone's doing that already. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to yeah, be a so big hitter. I'm trying to do something like, you know, there's no point in, you know, just leaving Twitch and then doing something that, you know, everyone else has been doing, doing already there, you know, it's like, what's the point in that? So, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't really know. Yeah, it's, but that's a good thing, that's a good thing. Like, it's It'll like evolve. Evolving. It's yeah. evolving, yeah. Evolve. Uh, so you've got, you've got Ross and Friends booked for yeah. later in the year. Yeah. And Th that's going to be phenomenal. It's in the Empire, which is a small, classy venue. That it's in the Empire, yeah. It's so really going to suit that kind of music, like. Yeah, so it's um, it's yeah they're playing live, and then Mount Palomar, uh, Newcar is playing live as well. It's something that I really wanted to do actually a few years ago. Uh, I was going to call it Jam. Jam. <laughs> yeah, you know, because like when you play live, you you, you, you jam. jam. Oh yeah, 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 got that. Got that. Uh, but yeah, it never happened. But this is sort of feels like what I wanted to do then um, so that's it's gonna feel a bit more like a gig yeah I think but well, that's what that's what Ross and friends would want their whole thing is just a live performance they've got guitar involved and everything like that exactly. so that's what people want to experience when they go yeah. see Ross and friends I saw Ross and friends and they were supporting bicep live and them in that venue like the Ulster Hall just felt right because that is kind of a, a gig venue yeah and it, that was fantastic that was one of the points in my night that I loved the best of the yeah. bicep live yeah, the, yeah, yeah. bicep or class anyway like but yeah. Ross from friends are fantastic yeah but have you what, what what kind of other gigs have you got planned for the future have you got anything that you'd be able to disclose with us today uh, like <laughs> I'm not even being not even being coy here I don't have anything else but <laughs> <laughs> I really respect but, that, mate. Yeah, there's, no, but but there's, there's only so much you can do planning ahead. Like you've already yeah. got like four class headliners for the past couple of months. Like you've yeah. had Lone Down, you've had Ski Mask, you've you, you have Octa Octa on the Octa Octa on the books. Yeah, so Octa Octa is gonna happen like uh, early next year, and that's all I have at the minute. But like, <laughs> that's I, sweet, mate. That's you know, sweet. You know, I I do have stuff in in your head in, that in will head precipitate that will somehow get to belfast that's all we need i just i don't even know how to tell you about it right now you know well as long as it comes to belfast in the end happy enough for that like yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway matt i really appreciate the chat mate right. good seeing you yes you too good cheers <laughs> right, guys this has been dara for about last night done a breeze block for ski mask he just took us on a dj and master class through all kinds of genres uh catch him if you can next time he's here Good evening folks and welcome to About Last Night. I'm Joe and tonight I'm at the gig of the week. I'm live at St. Luke's. I'm chatting to Badly Drawn Boy. We've just seen his gig. It was absolutely amazing. You're going to see shots to come. I'm going to sit down and chat to him about his new album, his new documentary, just life in general. He's a great guy, so I just can't wait to sit down and have the chat. So stick around. <laughs> Just with your new album, um, you are kind of going in a different direction a little bit because you're in a different place in life currently. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what we should expect in 2019? Uh, well, I'm, I'm just, I feel like it's the beginning again in a lot of ways with, with where I'm at. I've had a few years away from, from releasing records and a lot's happened. I've got a new little boy, Ruben, who's 18 months. My, old, my older children, Edie's 18. She was born when the first album came out. So it feels like a second half of my life in a way like a part two and I, f I feel like I'm just ready ready to do it again I mean there's a few years where I, d I doubted myself whether I whether I could be bothered to do this again there's so much going on in the world the whole the whole stuff of the referendum a couple of years ago 
what's going on with Trump in America. I don't know, it's, there's a lot of things in the world that we all know are, are wrong and the consciousness that everybody, there's a collective consciousness, which I think in a, in a good way should spawn some change because people are a little bit more vocal about it now and we're all we're so aware of what's going on with, with social media. The good side of social media is that we're all aware. Sometimes it's it's oversaturated and we get we get flooded with information and you nothing's done about anything because there's too much to take in. But I think on a on a basic level, just doing good stuff, uh making someone's day, uh like if if people came to this gig tonight and felt good about it, that's that's my job done in a way. I, if, as long as for an hour and a half or two hours I've spread some kind of joy of like, well, I try to do that as much as I can. Not every gig I can do it, but a place like today at St. Luke's, it, it feels easy because it's such a great place to play and, and coming to Ireland, it, you know. So if I can spread a little bit of love, I'm, I'm happy that I've, I've done that. I'm, I'm trying to do that with the, with the next album, just just continue that, uh, just put some good music out there and uh, I don't want to change the world. I, I want to change me more than I want to change the world. I think that's what's changed in me. But I'll tell you something. Um, just in terms of kind of a group kind of uplifting thing, at some point during the, the show, you got everyone to whistle yeah. along to the song, right? Yeah. And that was, moment, that, was good. that was great because like you had 400 people in tune, in, in kind of this kind of positive buzz, we're all part of something. Yeah. Walking away, everyone's kind of uplifted. Everyone's happier now than they were when they walked in at eight o'clock. So you've done your job and genuinely, thanks a million. Oh. Thank Genuinely, you. man. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. <laughs> the Dublin team of about last night. We definitely feel like we hit the gig of the week this week, but be sure to tune in next week when we will be hitting Jazz Week at the Sugar Club. Irish Media Network. We entertain.